am sitting here online with our Director of Children and Family Ministries, Julie Hawkins, and our Senior Pastor, Daniel Humbert. And Go Beyond is a time where we can dig deeper into the message on Sunday. So our friend Julie is here to help us because we are in the middle of our parenting series. Um, and of course, as a Director of Children and Family Ministries, she has a personal connection with our parents, and she has three kids of her own. So she is experiencing all of the parenting dilemmas that our other parents are experiencing and can speak to that. Uh, today, we are digging deeper into the priorities of parenting. And the real challenge is how do we connect uh, what we learned from scripture that was, you know, put together over 2000 years ago to the way that we parent today. And so Julie and Daniel are going to have a great conversation about that. And I am just going to sit back and learn along with you and see what I can pick up as an aunt of two kids, my niece and nephew. Uh, so I'm excited for, for y'all to be taking up the challenge today. All right. Thanks, Alyssa. I'm really happy we're doing this series because I do have three kids and I feel like parenting is just a lifelong class. You can never read enough books or rethink what you're doing um, or re-examine. There's always new ideas. And so I'm really thankful that we're doing this um, as a mom and as people, as someone that parents in a village, you know, we all have influence over kids if they're our own kids or there are kids in our community. So I think this is a really great series for us to be doing right now. Um, and the first question I wanna ask you is, and I know you know this stuck with me on Sunday when you talked about child-centered versus God-centered. How can we shift our family and our parenting style if we find ourselves in an oh no moment that we've become a child-centered family? How can we shift it because shift happens to a um, God-centered family. Way to go. I like the way you use that shift happens. Well, it's, so first of all, we have to own that it's hard because um, we are so child-centered, it's hard for us to even realize that we're child-centered instead of God-centered, right? I mean, because, and again, just basically what I shared Sunday morning was this whole concept that we become child-centered with all of the best intentions to provide the best for our kids, to help them get better a better life than ours and so forth and so on. And so it's hard for us to even see that, first of all. So one is just owning it, discovering it. And then once we do, then we've got to take deliberate measures. And some of those are some of the things that I mentioned that our family does, you've mentioned that your family does, is, is realization is critical that, golly, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm so focused on my kids that I'm not really helping them become more dependent on God because our family is not God centric. And so it's as simple as trying to give more attention in the home life to things like scripture or to prayer or to religious conversation, spiritual conversation. And my hunch is that's one of the easiest things to do is just the spiritual conversation. Hey, where did you see God today? You know, how is it that you understand that God was with you today? Just something simple. And it needs to be obviously age appropriate. So the younger the child, the more simple the question needs to be. Or to just introduce scripture uh, to bedtime ritual or to morning ritual, depending on what's better for your household. Those are just simple elements to help uh, guide our family life towards a more God-centric deal. And then on the more sort of um, high-end or elaborate end, is literally calling into question our family schedules. What are we doing as a family? What are we doing just for our kids? And, and begin to wonder aloud, golly, is that really the best thing? It, it, you know, uh, is that the best thing to keep me God-centered or is that just a more child-centered deal? So it just has to do with activities once we identify that we've actually become child-centric. Yeah, That's and I like what you said about asking where did you see God today? Because that's a question you can ask a kid of any age. You can ask a two-year-old, do you see God? Where do you see God? And all the way through adults, that's the question we ask every week in life group. So it's something simple to open the conversation. That's exactly right. It does not have to be overwhelming. And again, I just, I, I emphasize parents, 
um, it is all right for you not to have a stock answer for whatever your kid is asking you about God or about faith. If you don't have a, a right answer or the answer or whatever, just talk about it. it. It's all right to say, I don't know, or golly, let's think that out together, or uh, maybe we can talk more about that. It's all right to have any of those responses, because I do think often, more often than not, parents feel like if I don't have the right answer, I'm going to either mess up my kid or I'm going to look stupid, right? And golly, I, I, um, it's all right not to have every answer as a parent. I've learned that for sure. I don't have to have every answer. And a lot of times we don't want to say the wrong thing, so we say nothing. And that, that's not always the case. Yep. So you mentioned on Sunday, Proverbs 22, 6, if you start them off on the path, they will not depart from it when they are older. How do we reconcile that scripture and the hope that we have as a parent when things go wrong and when things don't always happen the way that we think we've we prepared them for in life right well first of all i say as a parent and i know you know this this is a marathon not a sprint it is a lifelong journey uh it it doesn't you know it's not like i just make up name uh, dates or whatever it's not like once my kid turns 10, everything's final. Or once my kid turns 16, I'm all done. Or once my kid turns 21, everything's com complete, right? It's not that way. It is a lifelong journey. And so we have to look at that scripture in that context, bring up a child in the way they should go uh, and they won't stray from it. So all I can do is what I can do. I can, I can share my faith. I can help point my kid to God. I can help pray and read scripture and have spiritual conversations. That's all I can do. And that's all that scripture really meant was guide them towards that relationship. And then secondly, I would just say there are always going to be seasons in the lives of our kids when they either question, doubt, um, turn away, um, whatever. And, and, and parents know that's a season. It may be a very long season, literally like years, but I am convinced uh, just out of my own personal experience and out of uh, knowing other families that if indeed I have laid that foundation at two and four and eight and 10 and 16 or whatever, if indeed I've laid that foundation at some point, our kids will return to that, whether as a 20 year old or a 50 year old or whenever, because they'll actually recognize that it, it was helpful. It, they may look at it differently or, or have a different perspective, but they'll realize that there was something valuable about those things when they were children. That, that's my take on it. I bet you've got some others. I, I do, and I am, I'm in the midst of that right now. And, and it's, um, I think of what Doug said also about um, it's for now, it's not for forever. So yeah. I kind of tell myself that that's my parenting mantra, mantra right now, um, because it gets, it's hard. And you talked about seasons and this seasons of adolescence, which by the way, I saved not many of my books from grad school, but I saved that one <laughs> because this season seems to drag on forever. And a hundred years ago, it wasn't like that. I mean, right. kids grew up and they left the nest and now yeah. it's starting earlier and lasting longer. Yes. And I think there are a lot of families struggling with being unprepared for adolescence. Yes. What adolescence, which used to be about a five-year process is now roughly a 15-year process. And um, it's different for every kid, obviously, but it's, it's long. <laughs> it, it is long. It is long. Yeah. And it's hard to, it's hard to um, remember that they are not completely mature, that frontal lobe development is not there yet. And so the decisions we would want them to make might not always happen. Yes. And it's hard to keep the faith as a Christian and a follower of Jesus through that, because I make mistakes too. I make a lot of parenting mistakes. And so I'm continually trying to learn to see what I can do and, and move through this with grace and figure yeah. out how to do it. Yeah. And I would also say parents um, recognize that the, the traditional understanding of church is not the only way that people can be spiritual and have a relationship with God. I, I lift up my 24 year old, for instance, you know, he, he hasn't been to church since he was 18 because the rule in our house is uh, if you're until you're 18 or move out of the house, you go to church. It's not optional. 
And so, you know, the Sunday after his 18th birthday, he quit going to church. And that's, that was, you know, his prerogative. Uh, but I will say he's still quite spiritual and he still has a relationship. It's clearly different than mine or his mother's. But I can tell by his speech and by his conduct and the things that he does, he still has a connection with God. He even still has a prayer life. It, it's not the same as mine, but I wouldn't expect it to be. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to challenge us to remember that, that it doesn't have to be the traditional go to, sun, go to church every Sunday or whatever. It, there are other ways to connect with God and Jesus. That's a great point. And I think as a church and especially in family ministry, we're just trying to lay a spiritual foundation and give kids and families the tool to start that growth. And hopefully it can be something that sticks with them through life, no matter where they go to church or how they worship, because it's, it's all different yep. these days. So thanks for answering all of my questions. Yeah, no, it's a marathon and we just have to recognize that. And it's hard. I mean, it just is. It is. Did I, I thought there was a third question or did we already answer? Well, I, I rearranged and I did the adolescence instead. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I left the comment. Hi, everybody, I'm back. I left the comment that I am 32 years old and just moved back in with mom and dad. And so uh, parenting might last longer than you think. <laughs> well, so I've told this to many people. My son about three or four years ago gave us a, 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 a a magnet for the refrigerator and the magnet says it's the first 40 years of parenting that's the hardest oh my god <laughs> great thanks uh, but thank you all so much once again for bringing us words of wisdom sharing your experiences i hope that y'all will join us again on friday for a special episode of go beyond where we are going to uh experience the message in song uh so daniel's gonna sing a song for us <laughs> please no <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but i hope to see y'all then friday at 12 30 remember you can catch all previous episodes of go beyond at tmumc.org slash go beyond bye